thank you. Look, I'm standing here sort of shaking my head and because it's you, it's you who have done this. The politicians need to lead too, but we don't lead unless we've got the whole of this groundswell of people. Can I say right from the start, this is the most spine tingling event I've been to in my time as mayor. To drive up... To drive up that road and see that sign across the road, I pulled up and risked getting bogged by pulling off the road. If you see the ruts of this side of the road, the Channon Market people, it was me. So I could take a photo of that poster. Reg, Uncle Reg King's here. You've been brilliant, standing up for your people and this community to the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council. Yeah. Thank you for being here today. And can I say, uh, the cameras didn't get the most beautiful image of the children running down the streams. And I understand they need to film that again. So kids, I hope you haven't thrown away your gorgeous costumes, because we need to do that again when everyone else leaves the Oval. But let's give a big clap for the kids. They were fabulous. OK, two years ago, uh, most people in our community had not heard of the letters CSG and they hadn't heard of the word fracking. Last year the word fracking became one of the most uh, p popular words as judged by the Macquarie uh, Dictionary throughout all of Australia. That's how informed the whole of Australia now is about coal seam gas and the risks to our community. So we've come a long way. I'd like to tell you this morning I had two very interesting community events. The first thing I did was to go down and do the countdown for the paddlers, the uh, kayakers, who are paddling from Lismore to Ballina over the next uh, two and a half days. It's 93 uh, kilometres down there and they're paddling. The first thing when I got out of the car uh, to approach these people, they said, thank you for what the council is doing about coal seam gas. I then went, I then went, and I hope if there are people here from Gulmangar, I hope you don't mind me saying that probably it'd be fair to say the people on the Gulmangar Hall Committee are relatively conservative. Is that fairly fair to say? Yes. The first thing when I walked into that hall this morning for the handing over a tea cloth that was uh, auctioned 90 years ago, uh, 1922 as a, uh, as a fundraiser for the Presbyterian Ladies Auxiliary at the hall and this cloth was handing back to the, being handed back to the hall. The first thing people said when I walked in there is we are really concerned about coal seam gas. So everywhere I go farmers are talking about it, young people are talking about it, children are talking about it when I go into schools and they ask an, about what council's doing about things. This is the biggest threat as someone said, and I quote this man this morning, he said, this is the biggest threat to our community since World War II. Yes. And yet, if you have seen this morning's Northern Star, you will have seen a quote, and I'll read it to get it right, from Mr. Wilkinson from the Chief of the Australian Petroleum Production and Exploration Association. Northern Star today, go and check it if you've got it at home. His, his quote, coal seam gas appears to be just another fad cause for career campaigners and professional activists. I would like the people here who regard themselves as career campaigners and professional activists to please put your hand up. Okay, there's a couple, fair enough, they've joined the fight too. But amongst these people here, I see the very people I see at the markets, on the, on the, at the, as we've heard, the hall committees, on the fire brigade committees. I see these people all around here that I see every day in everyday walks of life. To me, you don't look that scary. But I would suggest that you are becoming scary to the coal seam gas industry because they are starting to worry. What 
I would like to say is I have been so impressed. Whatever doesn't wreck a community makes it stronger. And this community looks to me, and you're the people who can judge it because you live here, this community looks to me as if it is the strongest it has been probably since World War II. You are so connected. You are so united. You are no, so supportive of each other that you are becoming friends with people perhaps you've never talked to before. You are learning about each other's lives and connecting this strong web of community that will not go away even when coal seam gas does. I would also like to praise you, as well as coming together, you are doing it in a calm, rational, coherent, non-violent way. Too often, anyone who protests about the coal seam gas industry, I've, been, I've had someone who contacted me saying, they're all unemployed, quote, terrorist types. Now, you don't look that scary, as I say. But if there is violent action, if there is willful destruction of, po of property, that is playing into the hands of the coal seam gas industry. So if I can make a plea to you, keep your cohesion, keep your strength, keep your rationality, and you can achieve whatever you want. Just before I came today, something came up on my phone, and I looked up the words of the song. You will all remember it. We shall overcome. That song has been used for civil rights movements for everything throughout the world. I'm no singer, so I'm not going to sing it. But let me... No way! Oh, stop it, Peter Lena, you can sing. Let me s s quote you some of the words. We shall overcome one day. We shall walk in hand one day. We are not afraid. We are not afraid today. Deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome one day. Thank you. Yeah.